welcome to just have you on stage. Thanks. I was only uh, mildly lost in the streets of Brussels for maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. And after giving everybody here a mild heart attack, I will make sure I can actually operate the slides. There we go. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Megan Clement. I am one of the heads of the Filecoin Foundation. Uh, and I'm super, super excited to be talking today about Deepin. I feel like Filecoin is one of those OG Deepin projects uh, before Deepin was really a catchphrase in the way it is now. And I'm so excited to see this vision of the world actually taking shape. Um, so I think that we should think today a little bit about how Filecoin is a critical infrastructure for the next generation of the web. At the very least, data storage is critical infrastructure for the next generation of the web. Uh, and I think that we should talk a little bit about how data storage can really be the underpinning of this deep in revolution that we have all been thinking about and talking about for so long. Um, I would love to talk a little bit also about how Filecoin empowers other deep in projects to succeed and a little bit about what's driving the demand for Deepin. Uh, but first, let's think a little bit about uh, internet infrastructure, um, how it came to be what it is today, its pitfalls, and the potential that we have for a better world. So right now, I want you to take a look at maybe the slide, slide not, maybe the slides aren't sure. Oh, there you go. Slides are there. Okay. Um, take a little bit, look at the slide, and I want everybody here to think a little bit about when was the last time that you tried to go to a website and you got a 404 error? When was the last time you tried to get some critical piece of information and it wasn't there for you? Uh, was it last month? Was it last week? Um, this is actually a real-time view of internet outages around the world. So it's a reminder of just how vulnerable this piece of infrastructure that we have come to rely on, uh, this piece of infrastructure around holding all of the world's data is actually pretty, is pretty weak, is pretty, um, uh, is pretty fragile and can break at most, at most points in time. Um, one of the big reasons for this is that all of the world's data is really held by essentially five companies. We have um, Alibaba, IBM, Google, Microsoft Azul, and Amazon AWS. Um, and I think that like there's a lot of obvious reasons that having a bunch of for-profit companies holding up critical infrastructure is problematic, but um, a couple of the ones that I would love to point out is beyond the fact that a lot of these businesses uh, work off of trying to use your data as a fundamental part of their you know, business model, you know, cough, cough, Amazon, um, but also that it's just a handful of small companies, right? Like we have really truly come to rely on having all of the world's information at our fingertips. And this is only possible because of a set of companies that have existed with the exception of IBM for, you know, less than, less than 40 years, right? Uh, and IBM kind of just got into this game. In a recent study, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm from the US, so these are all US focused. Um, but from a recent study around people concerned about the internet, um, over a thousand U.S. adults, only 22% think that the internet is extremely fragile or very fragile. Um, yet over half, 55%, think that, have confirmed that they've lost digital information that they really cared about. 83% of Americans want technology companies to do more and to enable them to control their personal information and how it's used. 
but we don't have any real assurance that the companies that we entrust with this data are going to do that. In fact, we have a fair amount of information saying that they won't. Um, there's recent closures like Shutterfly's share sites and Apple's termination of my photo streams where millions of photos were deleted. People's precious memories were gone, and people weren't expecting that. But this is something that we've all come to expect uh, in this stage of capitalism, where if a for-profit company is holding on to our data, we know that there's going to be errors in it. We think that data online is secure and resilient only if it is held in an open source platform, only if it's held by something where everybody involved in using it can understand exactly how it's used and why it's used. Currently, 400 million terabytes of data come onto the internet every day. Um, this is partially fueled by AI and all of the you know, new revolutions that are happening in the world of AI. I actually got into the world of data storage and got into the world of crypto and Filecoin through caring about uh, scientific data sets. I had a biotech company, and I was one of those people paying Amazon you know, $140,000 a month to store 17 petabytes of data uh, to try to help solve cancer. Uh, and one of the things that really affected me was realizing that the problems that we were having in solving these very, very fundamental human issues, like new drug discovery, making better cancer drugs, uh, was not a, a fault of biology or a fault of science, but actually having some of this infrastructure around um, data and public data storage, um, the ability to access the data, having large data sets, and the ability to run you know, modern interrogations on large data sets. So with more than 400 million terabytes of data created globally every day, Large language models like OpenAI's ChatGPT, uh, like Google's Gemini, they're trained on vast amounts of data, um, but this data is controlled by a small number of companies. People are concerned about what's happening to their data, and they have questions about where their information that they're consuming is going, and, uh, and if this data is authentic. Because if we're looking at the next generation of technology, if we're looking at AI, you know, we all sort of know the adage, right, garbage in, garbage out. If we're not going to be um, having any sort of auditable standards about what's going into our AI models, we're not going to be able to trust the things that come out of it. Uh, DeepN creates a real better alternative to this. At its core, the decentralized web is about trust and autonomy. And decentralized physical infrastructure networks, DeepN projects, create real, actual, usable, modern-day alternatives to, um, to centralized models. They create real alternatives that are owned by the people, uh, that are not um, premised off of business models that want to use personal, individual data uh, to, you know, to make the money for the company, to, get, to increase shareholder value. Um, they're more secure, they're more private, and they're more accessible. And, you know, at least at Filecoin and I think a lot of the other Web3 models that we're talking about today, uh, we're looking at using, um, you know, game theory and real incentive structures that rely on everybody who's involved in the project to have a real personal incentive for keeping data safe and secure. Uh, we create new marketplaces for tools and services that are also more resilient and they have no single points of failure like we we're seeing on the earlier map. Filecoin creates an open market for data storage. So I'm sort of a little bit assuming that most people here today have like a little bit of a background about what Filecoin is. But for anybody who doesn't, Filecoin is a uh, decentralized storage protocol. Um, it's an L0 that lets people store their data a little bit like Airbnb. Uh, anybody can open up hard drive space, they can store a little bit of data, uh, and then that data is content ID'd uh, with like a content hash, so that you can have data stored everywhere, not in a location-based way, but instead in a way that is specific to the content itself. Uh, today, there's more than 2,500 storage provider systems around the world. These are all independent, small businesses. Um, 
and they you know, contribute over five exabytes of raw storage capacity. This allows for a system that is both decentralized and has like inherent security values around that, but also uh, is, um, but also is more aligned with user interests because you're looking at a system that is not based off of using customer data as its primary storage model. Uh, and Filecoin people have autonomy over what happens to their data and who gets to use it. They know exactly what's happening because it's an open source system. Um, and they aren't limited to storing their data with just a few big, powerful tech companies who we've seen change their ideals and their models over the years. A lot of the reasons that people use Filecoin, um, you know, they're looking at data sovereignty, they're looking at resilience, they're looking at cost efficiency. It's amazing that you can provide all of these values um, with a lower per terabyte data storage cost uh, than you would have on traditional storage providers. Um, and the biggest thing, and the biggest thing that I'm hoping to instill in people here is innovation. We're really looking for people to be building on top of the Filecoin network. We're looking to make all of our offerings something much more similar to the kind of plug and play models that you get from AWS. And we would love for everybody here to be thinking about what things are missing from that stack and how they can build on top of it. Again, I'm sort of assuming I'm talking to a, an audience here who is really, really bought in already to the like moral reasons to have uh, deep end structures. But what we need is what we need is people to build out the rest of the stack. The things that are really the demand drivers right now on Filecoin um, is looking at immutability and the proof of storage. So Filecoin creates an auditable uh, network that lets you look at where the data came from. So if you're looking at running something like an AI model, you can look at what was used in that training set in a way that's not really possible by scraping the modern web. Um, it's not only auditable, auditable <laughs> but it's also tamper-proof. So because as soon as that data set is, uh, is created and resolved, there's a unique content hash around it. So that means if anything about that changes, uh, it is visible and clear because it gets a new content hash around it. Uh, Filecoin off also offers um, a lot of information about provenance and authentication. So the same way that that um, uh, that, that like data set that you can say, hey, this is like the the snapshot of what went into my AI model. Uh, the way that that is uh, provable through a content hash, the data that is sucked up into that model can be provable by a content hash as well. Filecoin is not just another storage solution, but it is the prototype, prototype for the D-PIN movement's larger vision. It is currently the largest decentralized storage network. Uh, it's globally decentralized. It's not just decentralized in concept or in vision, but we truly do have storage providers all over the world. It is open source, it is open, and it is accessible. It is something that we actively encourage people to review, audit, and build on top of. Um, this community has been one of the old school, you know, OG D-PIN projects, and we really do have an innovation mindset. And so, you know, my biggest hope from this talk is that we can get more people who have been kind of thinking about building on top of Filecoin, kind of thinking about integrating Filecoin into the other Web3 products that they are trying to build, and get more people to make Filecoin the storage for their backend. Um, most importantly, we've got real world impact. Um, Filecoin is something that has hundreds of real world institutions storing data on Filecoin right now, including universities, research institutions. Like I said, this is how I got into Filecoin, uh, is that I found real problems in the way that we were examining biological data, and Filecoin was one of the best solutions I could find for it. There's nonprofit groups, there's media properties, there's giant Web3 projects like Solana that are all using Filecoin as their back end. And I would really like to encourage everybody here to think about using it as yours.
There's some other large DPIN projects that are building themselves on top of Filecoin. Um, just if you needed any more incentive to say, hey, look, there's other people doing this. It's actually really cool. Um, Bakliao is a project building compute on top of Filecoin. Uh, it's another open source project, so if you're thinking about using decentralized storage solutions as your way of um, looking at where your data sets can come from for building AI models, uh, look at Bakliao. Bakliao is a great thing to like look at, build on top of. Uh, video infrastructure, we're working a lot with LivePeer, which has built uh, Web3 video models. Um, we have a bunch of sensor integrations and some of the real world ways that you can use this right now is with WeatherXM uh, that uses Filecoin as their back end but um, builds their modeling um, using a sensor network of individual little like weather satellites that can be sent out to your house, uh, giving you significantly more accurate and real time data around your weather. Uh, and Fluence, which is um, a uh, an L2 that is on top of Filecoin that enhances capabilities and use cases for data utilization across the network. So I really hope that, despite me being slightly late, that uh, Filecoin has exemplified all of the ways that DPIN networks can generate effects that um, really, really can compete with our standard, you know, um, our standard Web2 large tech company models that we've all kind of accepted as being like the easiest way for our back end. But I don't think that anybody here is here because they want to take an easy way. I think that everybody here is taking a harder path and working on Web3 technologies because you fundamentally believe that there's something really good here, that we need to be taking back this internet infrastructure to have it be owned by the people. Um, and Filecoin's a real way to do that. So um, there's a great, there's a lot of ways to do it. I hope that anybody here who's interested in doing that will come up to me or somebody else on our beautiful Filecoin team, a lot of whom are sitting over here right now. Um, but we have a lot of ways that you can hook in and that you can work with us because we would really like to see the fundamental infrastructure of the internet uh, being taken back, being owned by the people, being moved back into open source projects the same way that it was in the 1990s, the same like fundamental views of why the internet is important. Um, we really have an opportunity to do using Filecoin as your backend data storage network. Um, Filecoin is so much more than a storage solution. It really paves the way for a revolution in how we structure and operate our di digital infrastructure. Uh, it's a way for a more decentralized, resilient, and equitable digital future. And it only takes a tiny bit of extra work right now to make that all happen and will pay off not just in the, like, the, the moral concept, but also is literally significantly cheaper. Um, and so, as AI comes in and continues to generate data and gobble up all of our compute power, um, I would hope that I can convince a lot of people in this room right now to think about using Filecoin as your back end and use this you know, excitement over data and our current um, weaknesses in our digital infrastructure as a reason to take the extra effort and use this as the time to move back over into a system that is truly decentralized, that is owned by the people, that is open source. Thank you so much. <laughs>